We post them on Facebook, we tweet them, and we Instagram them. But before the marriage of phones and cameras, the digital camera defined disruptive technology. Steve Sasson was an engineer at Eastman Kodak in the late 1970s when he invented the digital camera. Digital had kind of a bad reputation back in the 70s. There really were no digital consumer products, right? Today, everything's digital. You can't buy anything that doesn't have digital in the title. But back then, digital was, a, was an ex, sort of experimental. It was uh, difficult to understand. It was expensive. It was esoteric, maybe unreliable. It was an invention that would change the world of photography. Kodak patented the digital camera in 1978. While the invention was a technological innovation, it also marked the beginning of Kodak's demise. Sasson called his invention filmless photography. It could have been Kodak's second act. It was time for something new to build on the success of the cartridge camera in the 1960s. Fast forward five years. Larry Madison, a former senior vice president at Kodak, pinpoints the year Kodak began its long slide toward bankruptcy. In 1983, we introduced uh, several major products, and uh, the large one in the consumer area was the, this camera. And it was a very significant investment for the company. And uh, after, and that was introduced in 1982, but by the end of 1983, it was clear that was going to not be a success. By the end of the 1980s, digital imaging was squeezing Kodak's profit margins in the consumer space. It was a revolving door in the C-suite, CEO Colby Chandler and his successor Kay Whitmore had a big problem. Transitioning from the 70 to 80 percent margins of photo film sales to the 3 to 4 percent margins of consumer electronics. From 83 through 93, uh, was, they were run by uh, experienced Kodak managers who had grown up in the Kodak style. And that's not meaning that it was a bad style. If you look at what Kodak did in the last half of the 80s, they put a lot of money into looking in diversification. Chandler and Whitmore were legacy Kodak employees. Shareholders wanted someone who could lead the company into the digital age. They brought in George Fisher. Kodak made strides into digital displays and at one point even owned the largest market share of digital camera sales. But the company couldn't heal sinking revenues. In 2005, Kodak brought in CEO Antonio Perez. He saw the future in consumer printers. Perez, who'd come from Hewlett Packard, couldn't change the culture of Kodak and had difficulties dealing with legacy Kodak leadership. After decades of mismanagement and colossal growth in digital photography, Kodak filed for bankruptcy on January 19th, 2012. Since Eastman Kodak filed for bankruptcy in January of 2012, it has fallen out of the minds of most Americans, but it's still a very present thought here in Rochester. Many former employees speak highly of the company that they worked for for 30 years, while others complain because they lost many important benefits. The question everyone is asking is, what's next? At this point, the company is in flux, coming out of bankruptcy and trying to reinvent itself, so we're all waiting and hoping you know, um, that that will go well and we'll then be able to interpret what the company's next steps are. This Kathy Connor is the curator at the George Eastman House. Like she says the museum will continue to focus on the history of the company and its founders' and, uh, contributions to the city of Rochester. We have access to some wonderful health care things that Mr. Eastman helped to start in our community, great arts and culture with our museums. Kodak was like a family and its employees had their own stories. Like Phil Argento, who played for the Kodak softball team. Winning championships, playing with great players, and watching them play Shifty Gears, Tommy Castle, in that era, um, representing Kodak. Robert Shanebrook, who worked in photographic film for more than 30 years and says he touched every camera that went to the moon for the Apollo program, recalled meeting photographer Ansel Adams and staying in his cabin in Yosemite. But Shane Brooks says the bankruptcy has been bittersweet. As a result, they, they have to change the way they do things, and their perception in the marketplace will certainly be different than it was in the past. It's not Kodak no more. It's Eastman Business Park. But in the long run, for the people that still work here and for other businesses that are coming here, it'll be stronger, lighter, and more successful. Eastman Business Park is Kodak's industrial complex that remains one of the world's largest. But it is also home to burgeoning high-tech manufacturing companies. 
Rochester in 2013 boasts a larger population than it ever did at the height of Kodak's size when it was the city's largest employer. That title now goes to the University of Rochester. Kodak went from 65 or 70,000 down to five. Um, a lot of towns where that happens, they end up being a ghost town um, and they struggle. Jim Sinal is the president of High Tech Rochester, a nonprofit organization that helps startups in the city. Kodak's strength in high tech manufacturing bred a culture for the industry in Rochester. The DNA here is entrepreneurial and it's high tech. There's high tech manufacturing, there's high tech innovation, and these are the industries that, you know, we have expertise in. One of those high tech manufacturers is Videc. It makes machine vision automated inspections. We spun out of Kodak as a venture company over 30 years ago. Uh, many of our engineers, a few of them still with us now, um, uh, developed solutions internally to Kodak. Vidac creates software and custom rigs digital cameras and other technology to scan the integrity of labels, checks, bank statements, packages, and more. Among its business partners are the Treasury Department and large financial institutions. Kodak chose at the time to come to Vidac and design and develop an industrial camera using its mega plus pixels, sensor elements. So that, that kind of was a start of uh, digital cameras, if you will, uh, for Kodak. Unlike Detroit's plight from the decline of the U.S. auto industry, the agonizing fall of Rochester's corporate icon may be supporting an emerging renaissance. Eastman Kodak's reemergence from bankruptcy may set the groundwork for a renewed robust brand. They have still a, a strong R&D presence uh, around uh, image science uh, and material science, and I expect that they'll utilize that to hopefully forge some new innovations in that area to make that company stable and to grow. I got faith in God that uh, they'll turn it around, like I said before, and be leaner and stronger and more successful. A possibility, perhaps, of at least one more shot at a Kodak moment. Joe Doe, The Street, Rochester, New York.